Hello, everyone. Um, today I'm here with Ben and ISTP. You might know him from his wonderful YouTube channel where he interviews people of all personality types. Uh, we are going to be talking about ISTPs today, and I'm going to be interviewing uh, Ben uh, so that you can um, tell me a little bit about yourself. I'm going to be using the questions that I use whenever I type people, and also I, I know. You don't have much NE in you, but I tend to tell people it's okay if we go on tangents, but who knows? Maybe we won't go on any tangent at all. <laughs> if anything, right. if anything, like if we, I like to like use people as an example and then kind of use it as a jumping off point for talking about the functions and stuff. Uh, so yeah, I might like pause you a few times and be like, hey, like this reminds me of TI this kind of seems like SE, things like that. Yeah. But before I yeah. jump into that, do you want to tell everyone a little bit about who you are, your channel, and your interest in typology? Yeah, sure. Um, well, first of all, now that I have a goal to go on tangents, I will now try to go on tangents rather than just <laughs> naturally. No. Um, so I am currently living in Israel. I'm, and I studied engineering physics. I'm currently mm -hmm. working as an engineer. I have a mm -hmm. typology YouTube channel basically to investigate um, uh, people of types, see if all this stuff is really real or if it's just mm -hmm. uh, this woo woo and intuition stuff. But so yeah. far it's been checking out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the idea behind my channel was just to learn about the functions from the people using the functions. Um, mm -hmm. and at the same time, sort of maybe test a specifically objective personality and their typing, uh, accuracy. Yeah. So for those of you who are perhaps new to typology or the functions, something that's interesting is that, so for me as an ENFJ, I share the same cognitive functions as Ben here as an ISTP, but they're opposite. And what I find interesting about your approach is how you want to hear people say it in their own words. And you want to like really interact with them and let them sort of define their own experience, which I very much resonate with that. How do you feel right. like the way that you approach your channel, like shows your ISTP ness, I guess, <laughs> like the oh, TI wow. and SE. Well, okay. So let me just say something on that quick. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand that people lie and they misrepresent themselves and they don't know who they are, but I mean, I'm taking people on a spectrum and if I get, I figure if I get enough of them, then maybe some kind mm -hmm. of truth will bleed through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the way I approach my channel, I, so, and I, I guess is supposed to consolidate things into some cohesive whole. And I really don't have that on my channel. I'm yeah. All over the place. Um, and how it represents my, well, it's, it's really, I'm, I'm just staying true to who I am. Like I call my channel, by my own name and it's just really there to represent myself and no one else mm. uh, which is just self above tribe there it's like <laughs> yeah doubling down myself, yeah which yeah. i'm trying to get out of but yeah well it's interesting because i feel like for se and ni it's like you are taking the things that people say at face value to some extent but then you're also trying to look for the ni theme behind it so right. you are accepting what they're saying without judgment, but you will, it doesn't necessarily mean that everything people say is true. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 So the thing is the, uh, like the authority on you is you, no one. Yeah. Can, yeah. So I, I mean, you can yeah, you can represent yourself. Um, and to me, that's as true as it can be, but you can also misrepresent yourself mm -hmm. and, I, and, and so, yeah, I, I'm not picking you apart and saying, okay, you're representing yourself wrong. But if I have a lot of people of your same type or similar types, then it could be like, okay, so this person saw themselves maybe a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your journey discovering that you were an ISTP? Did you consider any other types before landing on that? So, yeah, I was always tested as INTP. Um, mm -hmm. And I really thought I was, I, I, w when I got into typology, I saw my cognitive functions. I knew I was using TI first, 100%. And then I knew I was using NI and SE. And I, because of the jumper thing, I thought maybe I was TINI. Mm -hmm. But I, I see that I'm TISE now. But like, 
that was just a little switch there. Mm -hmm. And what convinced you that you were actually an ISTP? Um, just seeing, seeing how I approach the world, I guess, like how, how I interact with stuff and people and, and things and just everything. It just resonated with those functions. Like I, I, I saw that I couldn't possibly have different functions. Yeah. So was it just more like the more you learned, the possibility just didn't seem to fit? Um, I guess, I guess so. I, I, how would I word it? Um, yeah, it, guess, it just locked it more and more into place as time went on. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm just wondering if there was like a specific misconception, misconception that you had about like intuitives that you then realized was wrong over time. Yeah. Or yeah. if you could speak to that. Yeah. So the intuitive conception that I had was that um, it was theoretical, that intuitives are theoretical, mm -hmm. and that's not, that's not true. Um, and you thought, well, I'm theoretical, so why yeah. am I not an intuitive? Yeah. What other um, but sensors can stereotype? be theoretical too? Yeah. yeah what sorry. other like sort of stereotypes about INTPs did you like kind of relate to at first? Um, just the idea that uh, I was secluded. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't like people. Um, Mm -hmm. I guess it's not that I don't like people. It's just that um, mm -hmm. I was afraid that they didn't like me sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was, I was into, I was into maths and sciences and, and the ISTP, I guess the stigma is that they're not, they're more hands-on mm -hmm. types. Mm -hmm. really. Yeah. And I find it interesting because I feel like, I don't know if you're familiar with the idea of like the knowledge economy, but like a lot of pretty much um, a lot, most economies, jobs are becoming more and more like white collar of like, you're using your knowledge in order to get something done. Whereas it used to be a lot more hands-on whenever we were a lot more industrial. So like a hundred years ago or so, it was like only a certain portion of the population would um have jobs where they just use your mind but now like so many jobs involve using your mind like so many jobs are just from the computer we aren't like doing as much manual labor like not that that doesn't exist like we still need that yeah but it's interesting because i think that when we think of istps a stereotype can just be like oh well they like use tools <laughs> and they're like hands-on or whatever but SE is also used like in the knowledge economy or in like doing other jobs, like using their minds for their jobs as well. You know That's what I mean? Interesting. Well, that another misconception I had early on was that ST was following protocol. ST mm. was like, uh, yeah, conformists and things like this. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I saw myself as definitely not a conformist. Uh, definitely challenging yeah. the status quo. And that's something I learned about. It's not just me. It's all STPs are very challenging. Yeah. 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 That's what I was going to say. Like, would you say that all ISTPs feel as though they are trying to challenge the status quo? Because I would yeah. think a, number, a big number of them probably do. Yeah. I don't know if it's all of them, but, uh, but yeah, a number of them. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so I guess what I'm curious about too is um, what would you say to someone listening that perhaps isn't sure if they are an ISTP or INTP or like maybe they think that they're an INTP, but they've never considered ISTP. Could you mm -hmm. speak to that of like how to tell the difference a bit? Because I feel like a lot of ISTPs for whatever reason in the type community like think that they're INTPs for a bit at first. And it seems right. to be common. So another thing I noticed that was common was uh, ESTPs think they're ENTPs as mm. well. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess the, it all boils down to the functions of a SE versus NE. Um, and just SE is, it, I saw a really good video by uh, an ESFP talking about SE. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's really, 
looking at what's realistic. It's mm-hmm. not it's not straying too far from what's real. It's not listening to like I just remember my whole life I would listen to just nonsense from people talking about auras and spirits and things like this. And I, I would think that maybe an INTP would be more open to this kind of thing. Whereas an ISTP would just be like, that's not real. That's mm. even though like I've been curious and I've looked at it a little bit, but I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it feels like going into the deep end, like yeah. not, not safe. Yeah. Do you feel like, um, before you knew you were an ISTP that like, okay. Like, do you feel like, um, it was just simply a matter of understanding what SE is and the moment you know what it is, it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I do that. Or was there any mm-hmm. sort of resistance of like not wanting to realize that you use SE? Yeah. Well, okay. For me specifically, it was easier to see any versus NI. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, that, and I was seeing NI. Uh, so then I knew I had to be ISTP, but in terms of, SE versus NE, it, I guess OP defines them as gathering. Um, I have no idea how NE works. Like I, I, I can't compare myself to... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So I actually, I feel like that's, I feel like several I, ISTPs actually could find value from asking themselves if they use NE or NI. Because right. I feel like that's, it's very easy for you to see like, okay, clearly when I'm using my intuition, it looks like this. Right. You know? Interesting. So, okay. I guess I could just get into the questions now. I just, I find it so, okay. Actually one other question is why are there not more ISTPs in the tech community? Um, Cause I think actually, or sorry, I just realized that it's like you're talking about how you dismiss things like auras or things like right. that as like not real. But then like your whole channel is about testing whether or not this is real. Do you exactly. think that a lot of yeah. ISTPs would be perhaps unsure what to think about type? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think once it, so if they come to my channel, they'll see that it's approached a little bit differently than mm-hmm. some of the other channels. Um, Hmm. Yeah, if it, if it's approached as some spiritual stuff, it's it's scary. I don't hmm. I don't I would I don't know scary. It's just it's it rubs you the wrong way. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, how do you believe that you are distinguishing yourself and like your approach, perhaps compared to other typology channels or just like other typology people? Like, do you feel like your approach is different or? Well, first of all, so my channel wasn't like, I didn't plan my channel out. I didn't say, Hey, I'm going to have an approach. Uh, right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I I said, I first just, I was doing a channel on my own, just my own channel with like three views on every video. And then, and then I wanted to investigate this stuff. And I saw there was a missing piece Mm. to figure this out. And the missing piece was asking people to explain their own functions because like everyone on YouTube was explaining, okay, this is what NE is. This is what NI is. This is what like explaining all that stuff. But it's like, well, how do I, how do I know you're saying real things? Like you're just quoting young, you're quoting this person, you're combining books. Um, let's hear it from actual people who use the functions and see if, if, you know, it could just be psychological. It could just be in their head. Okay. I'm using NE. So I'm going to pretend like I'm using NE and I'm going to act that way. And so that's really what I wanted to see. Is, is all this just a hoax? Is it a game? Are we just believing our own BS, you know? Yeah. And I feel like you taking that approach is so SE over NE <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because NE is like just going off theorizing about it. And then their sensory groundedness is in, well, Jung said this and I read this book and like they do have their sensing, but it's not from maybe not an objective experience the way that yeah. SE you want to like actually interact with the person. Right. Right. And so actually I have to say that I was a little bit inspired in the back of my mind, at least from your channel and you, because mm-hmm. I saw that y- your authority doesn't come from reading books. It comes from knowing people and talking to people and, and you mm-hmm. saw, yeah, you were, you were getting type from reality before, mm-hmm. 
before anyone else was. And I think that's just, that was the yeah. right for So, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. And kind of just comparing us even for a second is, am I, am I hearing you correctly that your channel started as like your TI curiosity? Like, I'm just going to test this. And then later on, it's like, whoa, I'm making an FE impact. Like, what is this? People like yeah. it? <laughs> what, yeah. what was that like for you? I, 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 it still doesn't uh, compute. That it, <laughs> <laughs> that's what's happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like for me, I'm like, I feel like I need to share this to help people. And like, it kind of comes from that angle first. Right. Where you're kind of finding yourself in that position. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the inverse. Yeah. It's exactly that. It's like, I'm, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to figure this out for myself and then mm -hmm. people are ending up wanting to come along for the ride, I guess. Yeah. That's, that's a great way of putting it. So, yeah. okay. So the first question that I have, you can share as much detail or lack thereof as possible, just however you would naturally answer this is describe a typical day for you. How do you invest, how do you usually invest in your time from your morning to evening routine? So, okay, so the goal of my entire day is to do, to advance something in my life. Mm. Um, whether it be music or my YouTube channel or an idea that I'm working on, or um, I don't know, anything that might pop up that I'm working on, mm. that's really the goal of my day. Um, all of the rest is just getting to that point. It's okay. Well, I have to work. I have to eat. I have to sustain uh, a household. Um, so there's all of these these things. But yeah, my mind is always focused on not on what I'm doing in the moment, which is funny enough for SE, but it's focused mm. on on what I'm actually trying to solve. Do you ever feel like you get there, or do you, does it just feel? like this carrot kind of dangling at you that you're always going toward yeah a little, little bit of both yeah a little bit of both but yeah definitely i resonate with the carrot thing where it's like okay i solved this but it opens up a whole bunch of yeah so do you feel like when you wake up in the morning you're like uh what's my goal for the day or do you feel no. like it's <laughs> do you feel <laughs> like does that goal change or do you feel like you are grasping at something that you understand or do you feel like it's just the act of growth in and of itself that you are seeking? Um, I don't think I'm that conscious about it when I wake up in the morning, when I wake up mm. in the morning, like my, I guess my mind in the morning is just focused on getting to work. That's, that's the task yeah. I have to do. And then while I'm focused, focused on getting to work and doing everything I need to be doing, my mind can wander and go to other things. Are you like a pretty routine based person? Like, do you do the same thing every time you wake up or is every day different? So I'd have to analyze that because I, if it's, if it's routine, it's not conscious and mm. it's not something that I'm aware of. Um, it feels like it's different every day. It doesn't feel like a, a, no two days are the same. So like maybe you'll wake up and like wash your face, brush your teeth or whatever in the same order. But do you feel like you aren't really there? Like you're thinking about other things? Well, also like, okay, so when I wake up, I have to, I have to be like, okay, do I have clothes? Did I wash my clothes last night? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did I shower yesterday? Do I need to this morning? Oh it's my like, God, I do that too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sometimes I like wake up and feel my hair and then I'm like, wait, what day is it? Did I shower yesterday or is today... Like, did I shower yeah. last night? <laughs> like, I like forget. So I guess you identify with that too, having a low SI. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Well, I was thinking what's kind of interesting is that I relate to how, okay, well, actually, before you get to me, do you feel like, um, what, what feeling do you have to get, I guess, at the end of the day in order for you to feel like, that was a good day. I did everything I could. You're talking about feelings here. I have no idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I guess I just. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll try to answer your. I'll try I'm to answer your you question. To further, I'm wanting yeah, yeah, you yeah. to further define like what it right. means to like have a goal for you. So, I guess every every day when I go to bed, it's like, oh, it's time to go to bed. I didn't do what <laughs> I wanted to do today. Like I didn't accomplish everything I wanted to accomplish today. Well, I'll go to bed and I'll do it tomorrow. And does tomorrow ever happen? 
it's a good question. <laughs> I'll no, let you I, know. Just, <laughs> I relate to this. I relate to this a lot too, and I feel like it has to do with NI and SE being in the middle of the stack, kind of. Uh, but I'm just curious to what extent it's different for me because, like. For me, I do try my best to like actually define my goal for the day. Um, yeah. And I also do always want to grow. And I, I always feel like, oh, God damn it, I have to go to bed and I didn't get everything done. But it's like that pursuit of like my goal is always in my mind, but I try my best to be as present as possible and just remind myself of the goal. And I like want to mm. experience the goal but a lot of times I don't get to experience because I'm so fixated on what I want to do that I like don't get to do so I'm wondering if like for you you're less conscious of like the NI goal you're so like in the moment but like craving the experience of growth that you like feel this like NI kind of beneath you like pushing you so okay so yeah I do resonate with uh, a little bit of what you said. I, I'm not sure I'm completely aware all the time of my goals and thinking constantly of my goals and mm -hmm. planning my goals. But what I am aware of is there's a process to get to where you want to get to. And if, and if you know, like you don't need to know where you want to get, all you need to know is what the next step is. So, so if I know, I don't know, if I know I'm head, heading generally east, I don't need to know exactly where in the city I'm heading to, I'm going to get to. Yeah. I just need to get to the city first. And then once I'm there, I can be like, okay, where's the district? And then I'll go to the district. But mm -hmm. it's like, it's, I know there's something there. I just have to focus on one foot in front of the other to get there. And that's mm -hmm. more what I'm doing. I'm looking at, okay, what's the next step that I'm doing? What, what do I have to do before I get to where I'm getting to? So it's interesting because something I like about, I think uh, Dave and Shannon have talked about this, is how to understand what your type is, you kind of have to also like track your hours and your time and like where you're actually spending your time. So as far as for you in a typical day, like w how do you feel like you invest those hours? Like, are you like, oh, are you talking to people pretty frequently? Are you like, working a lot like do you need a lot of alone time or what is that like for you typically yeah um it, it also depends on the day and what's going on mm -hmm. um i guess se is really conscious of uh current events and what's going on in my life at this specific moment mm -hmm. uh what maybe crisis might have popped up um things like this mm. um so you know sometimes sometimes i need a lot of alone time sometimes i just I just want to sit off on the side and just spend time in my own world thinking or a lot of it has to also do with what they call consuming is uh, just mm -hmm. whatever pops up in my YouTube feed or whatever I'm interested in, whatever I'm trying to learn, I'm spending time doing that. Um, do you, you know, multitask also, a lot? So by multitask, no. The multitask that I do do is maybe I'll consume while I'm doing something else. Yeah. So that's the only real kind of multi, like learn, like having something in my ear while I'm doing something else. Mm -hmm. That's about it. I, I do that a lot. I've wondered for me, for example, like if I like to like listen to podcasts, like while cooking or cleaning or anything like that. It, I, I feel like I do it because it's boring and I like want something to like help me focus. But like for you as an SE, like savior person, do you do that? Like, why do you feel like you like to do that? I guess. I think also similar. It's, it's just yeah. menial, boring tasks and it feels like I'm wasting my time. And so at least if I'm learning something or listening to something, then I'm, I'm taking a step somewhere. Yeah. 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 So what's interesting about your answer here is that I've noticed just from asking this question to lots of people that a lot of times SI users will like start to talk about, well, I always have my bagel or I always have my coffee in the morning and stuff. Mm. You didn't tell me if you drink coffee. You didn't tell me like what you do for work. You didn't tell me yeah. really any of the details <laughs> at all. <laughs> right. So yeah. it's, What's interesting too to me is that if an NE user was listening and they were trying to imagine your life, 
they wouldn't be able to really paint a picture in their mind because they don't know. Well, so Th does okay. that like make sense? It makes perfect sense. It's okay. just, it feels like I'm boring and whether I drink <laughs> coffee or not is boring. Like who wants to know if I drink coffee? <laughs> But, but, yes. yeah. <laughs> but yes, yeah. I drink coffee. And yes, I, <laughs> I, at work, I spend a lot of time in front of the computer doing translating things and, and helping people type up reports and programming and um, whatever pops up in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So for, for SI, like you didn't give them really any details to work with to envision <laughs> you. But what I find interesting, though, too, is that I feel like this is an SE thing kind of is that you seem to have this attitude you're exuding of like, it's just a day. It's like, yeah, I have to like do boring things like shower and clean and like find clothes, but yeah, whatever. Like you're like, so right. like whatever about it kind of, which is interesting. But, and I also feel like you're so like, like you're so in the body and so living life that it's hard to even like talk about a typical time because I feel like SE and NI, I, I feel like it's very cyclical of like, okay, crisis pops up. This is what I'm dealing with. You expend a lot of energy and then that means that the next day you might need to rest a little bit. And it's hard to define like what the typical day is because it's like you want to chase like the vast experiences. Like SE is about like these objective, like breadth of experiences or you're probably trying to like pack in different like new experiences, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, I think you hit it a little bit earlier when you were saying, um, you know, I don't know what I'm doing today. It, it's because I'm chasing that next step. Um, mm -hmm. I'm chasing what's relevant now to get me to where I want to get to. And so, mm -hmm. and so that's, that's more of it. Like, so say today I need to rest and think to get mm -hmm. somewhere. That's the step I'm going to be focused on taking. And then the next day I'm going to be spending all that energy, like you said. And it's, mm -hmm. it's really that it's, it's focusing on the immediate, what's most, the biggest priority of the moment, I guess. Mm -hmm. So whereas I feel like for NJs, we might be thinking about more of a long-term goal, perhaps of like, oh, this is where I want to end up, which means that this has to be my priority. I feel like mm -hmm. SE is pretty good at knowing like the most important priority at every moment. Like once you like check in with the moment, do you relate right. to that? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I got a picture of like just a, a chef in a kitchen, right. Mm -hmm. Who's, who's trying to prepare a meal and have it all finished at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. so, the, the, so that every person at the table can get their meal. So, you know, he might put the, in the pasta later so that it's warm and, like he's, he's, he's doing whatever is most immediate to get the goal done. And then in the end, the goal will be done. It's just, you have to advance all of the different things that are popping up to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That's interesting because I guess like for me, I like relate to you a lot, but where I think that NJs might disagree kind of is that sometimes if you're only going after like the urgent, most immediate things, then you can forget to do the things that like are not ever going to be urgent but are still mm -hmm. like important in the equation right. which how do you feel like you account for things that aren't urgent in your life yeah no that's a good point as well um mm -hmm. so like if if you're if you're constantly chasing the, mm -hmm. the urgent stuff lots of mm -hmm. stuff is just going to sit on the back burner like that yeah mm -hmm. um so i think it's important to um, to compartmentalize as well. Mm -hmm. um, maybe even if you're on a project with somebody, uh, find like find someone to work on the project with you, mm -hmm. so that you're a little you're accountable to something or somebody, so that you can't just mm -hmm. you know sweep it under the rug. How do you keep yourself organized in order to like not forget things? <laughs> um, or do you just not have that problem? Like Google do you... calendars is nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, organized is a is an issue for sure. Okay, what is what is the struggle with organizing then for you? Well, so I'll be honest. So the more you organize, the less you're actually doing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so like I feel like 
I can perf I I can perfect my organization and organize and organize, but in the end, it's just going to get disorganized. I'm going to have to do it again and again and again. Yeah. Like, why would I, why would I make my house completely spotless, get rid of all of the dust and everything when the next day there's just going to be more dust. It's more efficient for me to wait and sweep the dust later because then I'm doing it with one, like the same sweep. I'm doing two days of dust rather than just that one day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. And I feel like this is actually something that a lot of NJs need to learn is that I feel like when NJs are like afraid of the SE, like, oh no, I might potentially do something that might create a crisis. It makes us like think about what will happen and like pr prepare like way too long. And then when it happened, it's like, we think that doing that is going to save us from the moment potentially going wrong when sometimes we do that too much and then we weren't actually working hard on something. Yeah. So. And you're, and I've seen that and you actually might even cause the moment to go wrong because you're not paying attention enough. Yeah. yeah. So do you, do you feel like though that you tend to not really even have a need to organize and you don't really forget things because you're so alert that it doesn't really matter um I, I i don't i don't usually forget things and i don't usually miss appointments um, mm -hmm. um yeah that i don't sense. i don't really see the use in like there's always like there's all like you said there's some things that just stay on the back burner because there's more important things and mm -hmm. organizing for me is just like the least important thing it's interesting because I feel like when I was younger, I used to weirdly have more energy for this where like I would never write down if I had a dentist appointment or anything like that because I just knew like I couldn't like not know. I just like every time I made a commitment to someone I knew and because like when I would check in on the SE of what's the most important, like that would be like there. But for whatever reason, like the more clutter I let into my life, the harder it is to organize that. But I can imagine that for someone like you with like not very much NE, you're very like alert and focused on like the right things, or I guess like not the right yeah. things, but I don't know. Well, definitely before I was doing the interviews, um, mm -hmm. I had less, less things to organize. Um, yeah. Yeah once I got the interviews, I had to start keeping a calendar. I had mm -hmm. to start putting people down and knowing who I was meeting and when. And right now I have to check my calendar just to know what I'm doing in the evenings. It's basically to plan my evenings. The, the day is the same. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting because it makes me just really see, I, I feel like SE really does know in each moment what the most important thing that needs to be done is. And I think that a lot of people think about, I feel like a lot of people can equate that to NI as like NI is this wisdom that just knows what to do. But I feel like SE is that as well, if that yeah. makes sense. No, I definitely think SE is more of that um, than NI. I think NI yeah. can, can miss moments because it's yeah. too focused on something beyond the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I was going to move on to the next question, but did you have something? I, I probably did. I, 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 we're just... Okay. Well, yeah. if you think of it, if you think of it right. about SE, feel free to let me know. But I was going to compare, I guess, your typical day with, uh, with what your ideal day would be. To, if you could describe an ideal day of what you love spending your time doing, if you had all the resources in the world to support you. Um, yeah, probably just, uh, thinking, <laughs> uh, yeah, brainstorming, uh, in investigating things, figuring things out. Um, definitely that sort of thing. So do you feel like your actual typical routine or like flow would change that much or would it just be like, okay, maybe you won't be going into work that day and it would just be a day where you had complete freedom to do what you want. Um, I, I, I didn't see a choice there. Oh, okay. I was just saying like, are you saying 
that your ideal day is super similar to what you're already doing yeah no it no no not at all no yeah are you just describing it as every time you you aren't obligated to someone else so that you can do what you want to do yeah i think so i like so here's the other thing um i i don't have one theme that i can look at my life and say okay i was always into this it's it's like there's time periods where maybe like a year I was into one thing and then another year mm. I was into something else. And then sometimes it'll carry over, like I'll be into something else, but what I was into before is carrying over because I'm responsible to something that I promised or something like that, mm-hmm. or it's still interesting. And it's 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 not really planned out. It's more going where the wind takes you, I guess. But yeah. But at the same time there's agency there. I don't know how to explain it better than that. So your ideal day would include agency and freedom to go where the wind takes you. Um, just work on whatever I'm currently working on. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Cause how do you feel about even the word ideal? Is that like confusing to you? So it wasn't confusing because you're talking about my my ideal, but if you're mm-hmm. talking about ideal in general, that's a whole world of maze and knots and stuff like that, for sure. Yeah. Do you feel like you even have an ideal? I feel like I'm looking for an ideal. Mm. Yeah. How does it feel to be looking for an ideal? Like the same thing, the carrot that just keeps... <laughs> yeah. So... That's so interesting because for me, like I like know so clearly what my ideal day would look like. And I know so clearly how my typical life is like inhibiting me from that. What was your ideal day then? Well, really, I want to have time in the mornings to read and journal. And I don't typically have like that much time for like me time in the morning. I have to like get straight to work. And I want to be self-employed and I'm like on the path to being that there, but I still have another job where I would want to be in control of my time so that I can similarly to what you, you like to do is think and brainstorm. But like, especially because my TI is inferior, that time for thinking and brainstorming like can never come if I'm like so obligated to mm-hmm. other people. So like, it's very clear of like X, Y, and Z would need to change in order to enable me to like create this like dream calendar that I'm like on the path to creating where like for you, I'm just curious, like what the elements of your ideal day even is, but also I'm realizing about SE and NI because I relate to wanting to do like wanting to go where the wind takes you kind of, but -hmm. for me, every time I get like a gut feeling to want to do something, my NI is like, oh, this is like, what's meant to be is that I'm supposed to be doing this right now. Or like Mm -hmm. for you, your SE probably just like gets up and does it. I don't know. Like, yeah. Yeah. So uh, even the idea of an ideal day is a bit confusing because Mm -hmm. I, because I don't see things in terms of day, like, Mm one day wouldn't be enough yeah. to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Yeah. So it'd be like an ideal lifestyle more. Okay. Well, yeah. what would be your ideal lifestyle? Um, well, okay. So I can't divorce myself from a responsibility of um, putting in what everyone else, what you need to put in for society to run. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, I wouldn't, I, I don't think I would feel comfortable um, just not doing anything constructive for society. Um, even if it's just, you know, being a garbage man for two di- two hours a day, just knowing that I'm contributing to the, the gears and the cogs, mm-hmm. it means that, uh, not because I'm being told to, but because, because you just need to pull your own weight. Otherwise you're dragging people behind. 
Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, so yeah, I definitely would need to feel like I'm pulling my own weight. But then after I've done that bare minimum, I would definitely want to go and work on whatever project I'm working on. Hmm. That's really interesting. Um, because it's very ST, I think, of you to like what I'm asking you for this like ideal. You are like unable to remove the ideal from the practical real world. And, you know, you when I ask like NPs that question or something, they do completely divorce themselves from like the obligations of real world where it could just be, or even if it's just like, oh, I'm on vacation for three weeks or like, oh, I'm like doing some, like something that is, I guess, kind of impractical, but like obviously could still happen. Like, I feel like you're very much thinking about, what am I trying to say? I don't know how to word this, but I feel like I often hear INTPs even to compare to you. INTPs would be like, man, I wish I could just be in my room and like read all day and have no one bother me and just be that way forever and like never have to shower and like never have to talk to anyone. And like, I feel like from an ISTP perspective, you're like, okay, but that's a little impractical and it won't last long. So I think the word you might be looking for is realistic. Like I'm trying to be a bit more realistic. That was one of the things that bothered me about like the the Harry Potter books or mm-hmm. movies or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's like, how is society running? Like all these people are just <laughs> doing magic and stuff. Who's making their shoes? Who's like, I don't know. It didn't make yeah. any sense. Yeah. Yeah. So you, do you feel like you never really would be, would like feel fulfilled if you were just off thinking all day, but not like participating because you would think like, um, that would be like selfish to do or yeah if I knew what I was doing was actually contributing because like what I want the freedom to do is not be responsible to contribute like to go off in whatever direction I'm going and it might not even turn anything up it might just be a complete dead end um Mm -hmm. and it's not fair for me to go chase dead ends when everyone else is going to be supporting me and supporting my lifestyle That makes a lot of sense. And I feel like I can even see like the inferior FE in that statement, because I want to say to you, well, why would, why would that not be contributing? (laughs) Like, (laughs) I feel like what could you possibly, what path could you possibly go down that wouldn't be contributing or wouldn't be valuable if you cared about it so much? And if life was pushing you in that direction, then why would it not be valuable? Right. But it's, yeah. yeah, Sorry. Oh no, go ahead. So take music, for example. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's a good let, let's say I'm writing a song and I expect that when I go to write a song, I'm not going to have a song. It's, it's not going to work out. It's just going to be a fail. I expect that like five out of five out of like one out of five times, I'm going to have a song, but the other four, I'm just going to fail at writing the song. So it's just going to be a dead end. It's going to be a waste of an evening. But but like I need to do those reps in order to produce something. Right. And then Mm -hmm. at the same time, when I do produce a song, well, who cares? How is that contributing? Like, what is it going to do to anybody except for, you know what I mean? Wow. That is so fascinating because everything you just said is so S E and I'm just like (laughs) really seeing the difference between like an INFJ and you, for example, same functions, introverted, you want to like think about things on your own. I've known INFJs because I was actually, I was a music major in college for a bit. I've known like INFJ musicians where it's like they never get themselves to practice because they're so overwhelmed by all the great music out there. And they think, well, I'm never going to live up to that. And like, they almost like won't even want to make music unless it is that thing that is going to be amazing and (laughs) impact everyone. To where like that's how like too much NI and FE can sort of keep you from even practicing where you're kind of going into it expecting to fail or even like the way that you say like the freedom to go down a dead end, I feel like is a very important STP thing that I wish that I would do more, but I don't like, I, I actually really beat myself up if I go down a dead end. 
Right. I don't give myself the time for that. Yeah. 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 No, I definitely, that's definitely what I want to do. I want to go down as many dead ends as possible um, because I know if I go down, if I'm going down dead ends, eventually I'll go down a road that Mm -hmm. leads somewhere. And that's the, that, and it makes that road all the more special because you know how much work or how rare it is or how precious it is. Mm. It's almost like you stumble upon it, uh, like from trial and error. Yeah, that's how I'm explaining it, I guess. But it's more it, like I, ne- I, I never go down a road thinking it's going to be a dead end. I always go down a road mm-hmm. thinking, yeah, this is going to lead somewhere. And then it ends up a dead end. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, that's. Do you feel like you do you feel like you take those uh, moments in stride? Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. I remember yeah. I had an ESTP friend that would always tell me which. I didn't really know what he was referring to at the time because I didn't know, I didn't necessarily think that I wasn't doing this, but I had an ESTP friend that was like, you just need to like take the L, you just need to accept the loss and move on. Like he like always would talk about that. Right. And I'm just <laughs> like, and I was like, I think this in the situation, like my TI was like still trying to figure out what happened. Mm. Like it wasn't that I like wasn't okay with failure. I just was like, wait, what did I do? How can I make sure that I don't do it again? Yeah. Where, yeah. Like, would I you get, say that you're good at that? I get that too. Um, but then also I have that stubbornness where I don't want to accept the loss where like, I know if it, maybe if I just push a little harder, if I just put in a little bit more effort mm. and, you know, spend more time and more energy, maybe it'll, I'll break through and it will succeed. So it's, it's, it takes a lot for me to accept a loss, I guess, mm-hmm. unless I know for sure there's no way out of it sort of thing. How long do you take like trying to, or how much time do you put into like reflecting on what went wrong and like making sure that it doesn't happen again? Um, From my perspective, too much time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But no, because like it is important to figure out what went wrong, Mm -hmm. but then it's also important to get back up on your feet and keep going. Hmm. So it's like you're always reflecting and analyzing it, but never to the point where it's going to keep you, like stop you from doing anything. I would like to say that's true. Um, okay. I would like to hope that's true. Yeah. Uh, okay. Realistically, I'm not sure if uh, it depends how hard you get hit sometimes too. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So it seems like for your ideal, you want, it seems like a theme for ISTPs to really value freedom, right? Yeah, yeah. I get, I, it's the yeah. main theme I see from that. Um, um, perceivers in general, I think, value freedom. Everyone values freedom, I guess, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everyone values freedom. It's just interesting because I feel like as a TI dominant person, it's you aren't really describing, like, okay, like I feel like an FI user would come at it from, I like music. And so I would spend my time making music or like they would like talk about Mm. what they like, where you're like almost talking about like the rules of the game. You didn't say what you would want to do. You said, as long as I'm allowed to do what I want to (laughs) do. Right. Yeah. 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 So, okay. Tell me about a time or a general era. So a specific moment or a general era that you felt genuine happiness oh wow feelings <laughs> <laughs> it could be simple it could be complex however you interpret that question um no i think there's a there's a few times mm-hmm. where where you get that um i guess a lot of it has to do with freedom like a huge part of it um mm-hmm. maybe you know finishing a course at, at school or something like that so mm-hmm. you're now free from mm-hmm. the course <laughs> yeah so there is that aspect yeah um, definitely i have kids so when my kids were born um uh maybe like I don't know, in romantic relationships, uh, you have those times of just happiness and stuff too. Mm-hmm. But, um, but it's not something I, I think I feel like I'm chasing. It's not something that like, mm. I feel like, oh, I'm happy. So this isn't the goal of my life. 
it's mm. it's like coincidental it's something that's that you i can still appreciate it but it's not it's not like it, it it's not necessary interesting so yeah. happiness <laughs> not being necessary i'm going to ask about that but also so do you feel like it just sort of lands upon you or something reminds me of this quote actually that my girlfriend has in her room i i don't know like who it's by but something about like happiness is like a butterfly like if you try and chase it or like grab it you won't get it but sometimes it will like sit upon you or something right okay yeah yeah i, could, I guess i could i could get behind that yeah um and i ask because i'm curious about if there are any specific conditions or themes behind what created the happiness and it's okay if you don't know that yeah <laughs> I, I definitely do not analyze that or know that for sure <laughs> that's definitely but something I, that's i will i will try to pay attention to that in the future yeah well i guess what, that what i'm seeing is like um so obviously when your kids are born that's like a moment that it would be pretty hard to not be happy <laughs> i guess right. like that's like a very universal human thing yeah exactly yeah but I mean, but, also when they accomplish things, I'm happy for them as yeah. well. Like, I guess the, it, it ties in, it must tie into the FE in some way. Cause it's yeah. like, I, I, I guess my happiness is more connected to other people's happiness and other people's success. And. Mm. Well, do you feel like it's also like a sense of fulfillment in, in some way? I guess so. Yeah. As well. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, when you do a job well done, like when you've completed mm. a, a good job and you finish something and it's it's done and it's significant and you're happy with it, then I guess there's that aspect, the fulfillment. And the moments in relationships, is it more like just those moments when you feel like you're on the same page and like you feel like you belong or is it like, I don't know, <laughs> like, I guess I'm just trying to figure out like the yeah. theme there. I, I, yeah, I think I know the theme. Um, when there's a unified direction, like when, mm. when it feels like you're going somewhere together, like yeah. when you're walking on the same road, I think yeah. that's, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Do you resonate with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I guess how I would probably answer the question is like, um, those moments, like for me, it's like those moments when you know that like, yeah, like when you're going down like the same path and like when you aren't forcing connection with someone and it just is there and like those moments in any relationship, friendship, family, where, wherever, where you feel almost like the universe is conspiring in your favor and that like this person and you are like sharing an experience and it's meaningful for the both of you at like the same exact moment and it feels like a coincidence, that sort of thing. Yeah, you explain it so much better than me. I'll go with your answer. <laughs> but like, do you relate to that? Is yes, that like... exactly that. Yeah. Thank so you. So it's, it's so funny how like you're FE inferior and I'm just like always analyzing this because for me, happiness is very important. Like I, I don't know, like I'm always chasing happiness. So I'm curious if you can expand a little bit on how you say that happiness doesn't matter to you. Well, because happiness, I guess happiness, at least from my cognitive uh, relation to it, is is fleeting. It's it's momentary. Mm. It's it's just gonna, it's just gonna be there for an instant, and then it'll be gone. Like it's not like I have this strong SI where I'll always reminisce on this one happy moment True. that I've had. So, so it's very it's very temporary, and mm -hmm. I'm not. I don't generally chase things that are just temporary. That are just mm. you know going to be there and then be gone so okay interesting because yeah. i guess one of the main differences between how i think and you think is that i don't necessarily see it as temporary i mean it can mm -hmm. be but i like am more about wanting to build the structures that like allow more joy to flow in or something mm -hmm. but i'm wondering how do you feel like this relates to your inferior fe just so that we can like for people listening they can kind of see. yeah well, first, wh what you're describing sounds more like a steady state thing. You're setting up a system yeah. so that happiness is 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 constantly flowing. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. You're setting up a a, a filtering 
a system on a swimming pool that's just going to constantly yeah. keep the happiness going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. But okay, so FE, extroverted functions in general are more momentary from what I've noticed. Mm -hmm. um, they're more in, in the immediate moment. And so I guess just the SE and the FE together make happiness that momentary thing. Mm -hmm. because it's like i could i could see the sifis being the most um sentimental and the most you know happiness mm -hmm. really matters because it's always going to be in their history and their past yeah so it's interesting because it i feel like your inferior fe might be why you might feel insecure trying to chase something like an emotional state Maybe. because you might not feel like you have control over it but it's like you're controlling something else instead that probably is still headed there in some way, but you might not be as aware of how that impacts you. So it's like, what is it that you are chasing then? Like fulfillment, knowledge? Um, I guess it's, it's really cliche, but I guess like impact just. Okay. Um, yeah interesting being impactful doing doing something of lasting importance okay and not to ask about feelings again but how does it feel <laughs> to, it. how does it feel to feel impactful why is that valuable so okay so this is uh, okay i know i'm contradicting myself here with the momentary mm -hmm. thing but i've i've always i've also seen this that uh, your your third and fourth function for example they might be more momentary in pain, but when you actually do achieve them, they're more long lasting in pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like you asked me to theorize a little bit. So this is what yeah. I'm thinking um, is like, if I'm actually, so I'm actually using my TI and my SE to actually make something that's long lasting, then I can get that and people and people will appreciate it and I'll connect with the tribe over it. It's like something big. It's not like little tiny things. Like I, I do do the little tiny things in FE and I see people who use FE, they're constantly pouring in energy into the tribe in the moment. But from what my, what my cognition wants to do is just double down on the, on the TI and make something really big and impactful. And then I can just sort of ride the, the coattails of that yeah. for the rest of my life you know? Yeah. Yeah. That totally makes sense. And honestly, I feel like it would be too much energy for an ISTP or INTP to like, just try and keep up with the FE politeness constantly and like keep up with everyone when you're honestly probably going to be more valuable to people if you use your TI and solve things for them, like, or like create something that then people can either use or benefit from. Uh, and for me, I feel like the more I empathize with all people, it teaches me like the truth about humanity. And I have, the more I consider different people's view and expose myself to it, then the more like true, like the more I can understand truth. So mm -hmm. I can kind of relate in that sense. Yeah, it sounds like you're building a, a, a worldview in that way. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I don't, the more I talk to people, it's harder to be wrong because I, the more I empathize with people, I never want to think something that would invalidate like their experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, yeah. So that's like a weird way of going about it. Right. I, I can see the opposite there because a lot of the time I will go against what people think in mm -hmm. favor of what I see as true. And I could end up annoying people or, you know, aggravating them, making them hate me just because I'm going, but you're more accountable to seeing what everybody else thinks is true and just maybe l considering them. Yeah. And you know, what I've realized though, is that especially whenever society's like super divided, like either politically or by religion or whatever, that whenever I try and empathize with all of the sides, and then I like say something, it still comes off 
like an unpopular opinion because there's still going to be like a large group that is like upset that I validated the people that they hate. Yes. And right. so then the decider thing happens where both of us relate to like the EJ and IJ. It's like the self versus tribe. Like for me, sometimes it's like, oh, I'm empathizing with this side and this side. And then I say something that tries to reconcile both of them. And then both sides hate me. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I get that too. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, okay. you can't keep everybody happy. You have to sometimes you have to pick a side. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I've been realizing about TI is that sometimes it really does feel like the more true it is, the more it's going to piss people off in a way. Right. <laughs> and, and my experience, my experience is I'm not looking at the sides. I'm not trying to pick mm. a side. I'm just trying to see what my side is. And then that's, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, to... I'm like trying to converge all the sides and then like, no, like whenever I have my own opinion, I'm like very aware of how all the different sides and all the different worldviews right. could potentially like not like it. Mm hmm. And I guess I do rub my opinion against other people's just to, mm -hmm. just to challenge myself, just to see if I, I hold up. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, but I will form my opinion first, whereas it looks like you are, you are trying to get your opinion mm -hmm. first from the tribe, and then you want to figure out what you think. Yeah, I'm very comfortable with just straight up not having an opinion. Like right. I can like not have an opinion on something for like a really long time. And I don't know, do you relate to that or not really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can, I can not have an opinion for a long time, but if I hear someone's opinion, I could have an opinion on that opinion instantly. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. I can say that's bad. That's dumb. I, that, I'm not going to take that. Yeah. That makes sense. I've noticed though, like, especially with like, controversial topics where like, I can like listen to someone that might be considered an unpopular person and then not even have an opinion on what they said and then mm -hmm. it could seem like in the FE of like oh so that means that you side with this person and that you agree with everything they said and yeah. it's like no I was just empathizing with them I don't even right, have an yeah. opinion yeah <laughs> No, I, I, I definitely have that doubt as well, that if I just listen to them without correcting them or giving my own two cents on it, mm -hmm. they might think I'm agreeing with them. And I don't know why is that psychologically that's bad. Yeah. I don't like that. I want to have an opinion. I want to disagree with people if I disagree with them. And I'm toning that down. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Because I feel like... Um... I do want to have an opinion, but whenever I'm like unsure what I think, but I know that I don't fully agree, I can get like kind of quiet because mm -hmm. I'm just like thinking and like taking it in. Yeah. But, I was talking to another FE user who mm -hmm. was having a hard time in the moment um, expressing his opinion. And he said, after, after I'll go and I'll consider it and I'll spend the time required to form an opinion, but I, I can't just do it in the moment like that. So he, yeah. yeah, well, like, for example, the other day, like an ENFJ friend, like was in a conflict with an INTJ and like sent me this text message and was like, do you think I should send this? Do you think that this will go over well? And right. like, I didn't think it would go over well, but I didn't know why. And I didn't know if it was worth explaining. And then I was like trying to figure out the reason why I thought that it wouldn't come across well right. and like they this person di didn't know type as much and in my mind all I knew what to say is your TE sucks too much there and the INTJ is not going to see what you mean even though I see what you mean and I agree with you but then it's like I'm just like thinking and I'm like I, I don't know what to say and then like I just get quiet and like mm -hmm. but then like I'm never withholding anything it's just like I just don't know yet or I feel like some people can think that it seems like FE doms are like withholding their opinion when like I actually just feel slow. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of, of the impression I get from FE. I, I, I'm not sure if, because I think I can see you guys a little bit more clearly than other types. Yeah. Um, especially your TI at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I think I, I feel like I can see it a little bit more. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and I, and I feel like I can be a little bit more patient and help it a little bit, help you Mm -hmm. figure out what you think rather than putting what I think onto you. Yes. Yes. Right. And I think TE does that. TE is really free (laughs) with putting opinions onto other people and saying, you need to believe this. Yeah. And something you said kind of at the beginning of like how people are the authority of their own selves. Not that I'm, I don't, I'm not trying to say that TE doesn't get that, but my experience sometimes with TE users is that they might be like, you think this. And I'll be like, no, I think this. Why are you telling me what I think? Yeah. And they're like, well, you think that because I, you did this and this and this, and only people who think this do that. You know what I mean? Have you seen that before? Actually, what happens to me a lot is people are telling me what my intentions are when they're just wrong. Yeah. That happens to me too. And I feel like it happens actually to ENFJs a lot. And the problem is, the problem for ENFJs is that we respond defensively because we feel misunderstood and unseen. And all it does is prove the other person right in their head. When you respond that way. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a huge thing I've had to work on where like, if if TE is like, it seemed like your intention was this and you think this. And it's like, I can't even, I can't even argue with that. But like my default is to be like, you don't even understand me. I actually think this. They're like, oh my God, you're making excuses. It's overwhelming. TE TE is very overwhelming for me too. Um, Mm -hmm. Especially if they don't give you the opportunity to explain yourself or to even know what you're thinking. Because they can just hit you with another another, um, argument like really quick. They could just bring more and more arguments into the... Yeah. And for me, it feels like, wait, we're, we're talking about this one argument. Let's finish with this one before we go to the others. Something I really appreciate about TI and ISCPs really is um, I really, like, emotionally, one of the things that, like, pisses me off the most is when people aren't curious. Like, mm-hmm. I care about curiosity, like, so much. And I think that it's because... I don't like when people make assumptions about me. I don't like when people put words in my mouth. And that is one of the most painful things for me. And so I find it refreshing. I I feel like I find ISTPs very refreshing because they just don't trigger me. (laughs) Like, I don't know. (laughs) It's like, it's like that baseline curiosity of like not wanting to assume anything is like what I need to feel like I can even get my ideas out. Yeah, for some reason, I, it just relates back to the way I approach typology and wanting to hear the mm-hmm. functions from other people. It's that I don't want to assume that I understand them. I don't want to assume mm-hmm. that I know things if they didn't say it. Like, I want to hear from yeah. them. I want, yeah, because, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm bad at, at the feeling game. So I don't really know what people's intentions are. I, don't, I just want to, I, I want them to tell me rather than me tell them. Yeah, it could be that you're bad at the feelings, but what's interesting too is that I think when you have FE and NI together, it's like I know that everyone's emotional expression is like so complex to where like one expression could mean like 10 different things. And so like, unless you ask, you don't know. Yeah. Because like for those of us that have intuition and feeling like together in the stack, um. So like, and this isn't like fully a socionics concept, but I just know like the way that socionics groups like aristocrats versus like Democrats, like the aristocrats and socionics are like the STs or the NFs. Mm -hmm. And like, whenever I think about STs or NFs, it's like the way that we logic is practical. And the way that we deal with emotions is like, oh, emotions are complex. And so... I feel like for me, even like I can have that same behavior as you as like not wanting to assume about the emotion, but only because I feel like, oh, it's mm-hmm. so complex. <laughs> We're like, I don't know if that makes yeah. sense. No, I, I resonate with that too. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, and I, I, what, what also I, I realized recently is it could just be more like a misunderstanding. It's just like a different approach. Like if you, and I, I'm I'm not trying to defend this behavior, but I mean, some people accuse you of something so, mm-hmm. to see how you react, and then they mm. know if they were right or not. Oh, is 
Hmm. What type do you think does that? Or do you think that's just our human I've, thing? Or I have no have idea you? what the type is, but like, I've noticed that, mm -hmm. that like they'll, they'll accuse you. And I get like really offended when I'm accused of things that are wrong. Yeah, me too. It's like you made an assumption. Why would you accuse? But, but for them, it's innocent. It's like, oh, I'm just going to accuse you to see how you react. And then I'll know. <laughs> I wonder if that's related to NE at all of like, like, I don't know if this possibility is real or not. So I'm just going to test be. it. Could be. That also reminds me, gosh, what was I saying? I really, um, oh, that, that is related to, I don't know if this is an NE thing as well, but what really bothers me is when people almost feel like, ha, I figured you out. Like you were hiding this aspect, but I found it. And you, you know what I mean? When, yeah. Like they try and like, and it's similar to like making assumptions or accusing things, but it's like, they feel like they are being sneaky and clever for like finding something about you that like, isn't true. Like it might be true. It might not be, but I don't really like feel like that's a good use of time. Like for anyone. Yeah. And a lot of the time I, yeah, a lot of the time I think it's also to do with maybe fears as well. Where, mm -hmm. where they're afraid of one possibility. So maybe they'll accuse mm -hmm. you of that possibility and see how you react just to be reassured. And, mm -hmm. and really, it's an opportunity for you to reassure them and say, oh, like, see their intention behind the accusation rather than focus on defending your own intentions. Mm -hmm. And if you were in, it feels like if I was able to see their intention in what they were, accusing me of, then I could reassure them. I could say, oh, or I could laugh at, at the prospect of that. Mm -hmm. And they would even just laughing at it would reassure them God, mm -hmm. how ridiculous it is. Or yeah, I, I, I don't know. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like people even do this to like celebrities or like people they don't know where they like feel like they've got them figured out. And I don't know. I just don't like to feel like I've got people figured out like ever. I don't know. Yeah. Because people change as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I have just a couple questions left. Um, one, I want to know if you could talk just a little bit about like your pet peeves. They're about life or about people. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely identify with the one we just brought up there. Um, being, mm -hmm. being accused, being blamed. Um, I guess um, just being stuck in an opinion is or or mm -hmm. coming to a conclusion too quickly without um considering things and if you wanted you wanted to help to bring someone hey you know you came to this conclusion quick did you consider this do you consider this and if they're closed off they've made that decision without wanting to revisit it that is kind of a, a pet mm -hmm. peeve because yeah. In my, from my perspective, it's like a lack of humility. It's like, it's like uh, some kind of ego to say that I'm right and, and I could never be wrong is basically what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of times people do that because emotionally they have blocked off, blocked right. off another possibility um, that like it hurts too much to consider it. Right, yeah. And so not saying that everybody that would do that is an FI user, but I do think that if an FI user was doing that, then they probably aren't even aware of the TI lack of humility that they have. Right. Yeah. Something that I've thought about a lot in talking with my like ENFP friends is that there seems to be this sense of like what responsibility is seems to be very different to FI versus TI where mm -hmm. like, um, I feel like a lot of times when an FI user feels like they are taking responsibility, they like are completely missing like what would be responsible for the TI user. And I don't know how to explain that fully right now, but it yeah. just reminded me of that. Yeah. Well, it, it, it reminds me of a friend I have who will, will just, um, he'll just start giving over information that is just blatantly, completely and utterly wrong. And he will just give it over as if it's factual. And he will be like, don't argue with me. And for me, that's just like, 
that's just the <laughs> the biggest sin you can ever do is just give over like spread falsehood yeah um, because it yeah it, yeah it feels like it feels like all of our problems in the world and all of the conflict and everything all has to do with just this this lack of truth and if there was more truth there would be less conflict and it's probably just a delusional ti thing but that's what it feels like that makes sense because okay do you feel like most people don't understand the impact that they create whenever they spread falsehoods yeah yeah, yeah. so okay so i was thinking about this the other day too is like uh fe is usually related to being able to see this this fabric this social fabric um this mm -hmm. this fabric of harmony or, or whatever it is and and so it feels like I'm doing the same thing with like this fabric of truth where mm -hmm. like, where like I, I see these perturbations, these, these falsehoods being spread and, and even groups gathering around these falsehoods. And it's, and it's like, I can see the damage and the result of this where it might yeah. take a long time for this kind of thing to be reversed and to, to backpedal. I think that's very valid because I feel like falsehoods can sort of spread like a virus and right. then like people can be too lazy to like do their own research and yeah. then they just will be like that feels true and it feels true based on either their like past traumas or what they're open to like what they're emotionally able to see right because people can't see possibilities that they aren't like ready for unless you like challenge yourself and are like looking for them and 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 i feel a lot of it also has to do with plugging fears just mm -hmm. um i'll i'll believe this because if i don't i'm i ha i'll have to face something that i'm i don't want to face mm -hmm. yeah and then that kind of falsehood spreads a lot quicker because it's it's something that lots of people are looking for some information like this. So like, okay, so here's an example, um, just to bring it into the sensory, there was this whole incident where they were taking autistic children and putting some kind of uh, chemical uh, in their behind to kill the gut bacteria or whatever. And like, there was like this doctor promoting this. Mm -hmm. And really what it was doing, it was, it was giving parents hope that there's like this cure for autism or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why they were all gathering to this doctor who was, you know, he got his medical degree taken away or whatever, and he was actually damaging these children and ruining their, their guts and it didn't cure mm -hmm. any autism or anything. But like it was giving them this false hope um, and mm -hmm. it was very damaging. And so I guess that's the kind of example that I have where it's, it's like people will flock to this because it's, it's mm -hmm. yeah, it's pacifying a fear. Yeah. And I think that like for me, with TI as my inferior function, I had to like feel the pain of lies in order for me to like be interested at all in what TI is doing. Oh, <laughs> like really? that's how I had to discover it kind of is like right. just experiencing how painful it is whenever lies spread either mm. about a person or like just in society, like politically or like in business. Like I think about how um, even just like racism or sexism, like people have like these beliefs about specific groups of people that are like perpetrated and like um, people just think this is the way it is like without questioning it. And it can lead to like a lot of, I guess, it, it could just lead to a lot of pain. Like if people yeah. are not thinking in the right way, I don't know. It's all connected. I'm wondering. Uh, so this is something that I was wondering about as well. Is that like you're you're more you're more tolerant to the pain and the and and the and the 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 positive and the negative in your uh, first function. So like maybe mm. bad vibes won't really affect you as much because you know mm. you're shifting back and forth constantly between the positive and the negative, and you can hold both simultaneously. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you experienced that with FE, but I experienced that with TI too. I have no problem with contradiction and knowing mm -hmm. that it will resolve itself out, like that it's just temporary, that there's no such thing as a real contradiction. Um, and 
if enough work and time and energy goes into it, it'll, it'll iron itself out. Okay. So are you saying that like, we are tolerant of like maybe inconsistencies in our dominant, but not in our inferior sort of right. thing? Yeah. Yeah. That actually reminds me, I can't remember if this was like when the whole pandemic started or not, when I was talking to you, I can't remember what, what it was, but I was like doing some sort of emotional labor for someone and you were like, Oh, I'm sorry. Like, Oh, it sounds like you're having a rough time or something. Right. Like, I answered oh, no, under fine. a YouTube video of yours. Yeah yeah. 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 And I was like, Oh no, I'm fine. I'm just like doing the work to inspire people at a time like this or something. And like, okay. Like, I bring that up because I think that I know that all negative feelings are meant to like purify you and heal you. Mm. So it's all healing at the end of the day. Even if you have, you have to go into the darkness and into like, and into your shadows in order to see the light again. And the more of that, that you um, integrate the greater your personal power and the more you're able to like, get through anything and i think mm -hmm. it's like my painful moments that have like given me the resilience in my life oh that's interesting and so you and and you should also then be more tolerant to the pain and more able to deal with it when it does come yeah well like honestly even just like with the state of the world right now i have a lot of empathy for the ways that it's like the economy especially in america and just like lots of things are affecting right. real people's lives but at the same time like i really my fe and ni just sees this as like a movement where each individual is being sparked into having like their own existential crisis mm -hmm. they are having to go down to the darkness of uh, because they don't know what's going to happen next and like everyone is like on edge emotionally but it's all hopefully going to clear our minds so that we can make better decisions and like create a better system. So I'm yeah. like very hopeful. So here, here's what I think was happening during that time as well mm -hmm. with you mm -hmm. is I was seeing you going into some kind of deep end, some, some place where I would never go and I would never <laughs> feel comfortable going there. And you were just really going into like these negative emotions. And it's like, you, you it didn't bother you. What was, no. what was over there <laughs> yeah and, and i was projecting i was saying if i was in your position see, talking about what you're talking about seeing what you're seeing feeling mm -hmm. what you're feeling i would be completely distraught like that's not something i would ever feel comfortable doing and i think yeah. i was just projecting that and it's like but no for you it's not for you going into those places is just it's second nature there's no no issue. yeah and i think that bringing shining a light on emotions especially painful ones um, is like a way to heal them as well. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes all it takes is to be aware of them because think about it. Like if we're talking about how spreading falsehoods is okay. If we talk about how spreading falsehoods is painful and falsehoods could spread if someone is in need, uh, they have false hope. Like if you were emotionally afraid or if you were emotionally unafraid of any, of anything, then you're less susceptible to taking on a falsehood uh, because your emotions aren't impacting it. Mm -hmm. So a falsehood. Oh, uh, okay. So you're yeah. saying like, um, don't get your emotions tied up in true and false sort of thing. Yeah. Well, like, okay. For example, if I, okay. Like with your example of like the autism thing and like the doctor that like, promise something if someone has emotionally accepted their child as they are and are right. like willing and like not afraid of like what people are going to say not afraid of their ability to be good parents or anything like that mm -hmm. they wouldn't have they wouldn't be as susceptible to something right. like that they wouldn't be craving it they wouldn't be yeah. needing it. yeah yeah they would they like be more be thinking that. about the safety of their child and thinking about well is this doctor legit Right. then they would be thinking about the shame that they have <laughs> about their mm -hmm. child. Um, so like, or the difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. So like, if they like, if you emotionally know that you can handle something, then yeah. I, Cause okay. So, like, or go ahead. 
Yeah. So for me, the only way I would get to that point is through mm -hmm. some kind of grieving process and acceptance in the end. Yeah. I guess I'm just like realizing how I feel like there's a stereotype or an idea about FE users as like being like sheep that just go along with anything. And that can be true. But I'm just wondering, like, I'm very hard to fuck with. And I'm very hard to convince. And I'm like realizing like having this conversation that it's like my FE that protects me. And mm -hmm. I don't really know how to explain it. But like the same, like it's, it's tied together is exactly what you're saying. Like falsehoods create a negative impact. But if you are strong enough to, I don't know, if you can meet your own needs somehow, then you aren't able to be like manipulated. Right. Cause you're not, you're not chasing that simple solution. You're not chasing the simple feelings. You're not, you're, you're okay with the negative yes. feelings. Yeah. Yes. You don't need to. Okay. Cause I feel like FJs can be easily manipulated if you don't understand the TI of things. And if you aren't like vetting right. the truth of things. But if you aren't like, if you're like okay with yourself as is, then you don't need to know the truth. Right. Uh huh. So like okay, even, so, uh, yeah, go ahead. No, I'm thinking of, of my experience with my ex-wife mm -hmm. is that um, I was always trying to get her to, to have her own reasons, her own logic, to make up her own mind. And her mm -hmm. tendency was always to look for some kind of authority to tell her what to think to mm -hmm. feel safe in in the numbers like if enough people are thinking something so then she doesn't need to go into the ti and process it herself she can just accept what other people have already concluded um and 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 i don't know do you, maybe do you relate to that it's like it's like if if you're okay with the negative the negative then you're okay with going in and being wrong um no okay well okay i feel like the difference is that i just wait for the truth okay the way the way that you like wait for happiness to just find you i like wait for the truth to find me i don't like huh. look to see what authority says i'd rather just think nothing like i need to like see it myself to believe it kind of yeah. Um, but I'm thinking about trying to find an example. Okay. Like for example, um, I, I'm like a life coach and I offer typing, typing services. And I also offer like, um, digital marketing services. And what I could do if I had like major imposter syndrome and didn't believe that I was worthy and all that, then I would be very susceptible to a lot of these like sort of marketing campaigns where it's like, Hey, right. spend $500 and I'll solve your problem for you yes. sort of thing. Yeah. Like, but as opposed to like spending time thinking about what the correct tactic is, I instead will spend time, making sure I'm okay with myself so that I'm like, I'm like going down my own journey. I don't like feel like it's easy for me to be like duped into thinking something that uh -huh. isn't true, but it's because I don't need it. Yeah. See, I'm also defended against that kind of thing. Like I, I would never go to some seminar where some, someone yeah. wants money and they're promising, Hey, I'll teach you this new tactic or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather like, just figure I, it out myself. Right. And I don't feel like it gives me authority either. Like, okay, now I have the authority to do digital, digital marketing because I learned it at this place. Yes, it, yes. It, it doesn't affect my authority one way or the other. If When I'm ready to do it, I'm ready to do it. Yeah. Yeah? The same? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And like, um, I think I've noticed a lot of ENFPs are not like me in that regard. Mm -hmm. Where like they go to, th they, they like their TI blind spot is like, they don't know what they think. And then their TE is like, oh, this person seems to know, like, please tell me, oh, maybe. I feel insecure. Yeah. 
Uh, but like, I'm not saying that no ENFJ could do that. I'm just like saying that the way that I solve like the, that problem where both of us struggle with F E T I back and forth, like, um, what's it called? Jud like decider issues. Yeah. But, double deciding. Yeah. But the way that I solve that is through making myself be happy with the people in my life. And I don't know, like, the, like you said that you don't really chase happiness and you don't really know what your goals maybe are for the day or something. But like, I like will think about my goals for the day and what will make me happy like each day. And like, the more I do that, then um, the less I need. Yeah. It's like I feel I'm able to create my own happiness and I'm not ever seeking it from anything. So I've seen, I've seen two, there's a positive and a negative side to that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so like the positive side is definitely, you're going to live a more happy and a more fulfilled life if you're worried about your own happiness constantly. Like, yeah, it's just, I'm probably not going to live such a happy and fulfilled life if I'm not worried about my happiness. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but and then but then like the the negative side would be okay if you're only ever chasing your happiness you're always going to get that grass is always greener syndrome where like mm -hmm. i don't have enough i i need more sort of thing so I, it can i'm not be. saying you're like that but yeah, i'm yeah. saying there is that that danger yeah, there yeah definitely it definitely can be but it also can have the opposite effect of like knowing what's out there um and like analyzing well what would make you happy what wouldn't sort of thing because mm -hmm. like i don't know like to compare that to you would you say that technically a ti dominant person you might feel like you never know anything because you keep chasing the answer and it might make you feel like you never know enough yeah. Well, yeah. If you're only ever focused on the next thing, then, then that's the way it is. But if you look at what you've already accomplished and all of the stuff that you've already solved, then you can see like, yeah. But then I also, time. yeah. I also feel like though for you, like as a TI Dom, you probably are comfortable with how much you don't know to some extent because you have experience of trying to figure things out and you know how much is like out there that you'll never be able to no yeah oh yeah right <laughs> yeah tip of the iceberg sort of thing there's so much out there that we'll never know we'll never solve we'll never figure out not in millions of years do you ever think about like man i wish i had more time to be able to know even more things um yeah it's not about n knowledge but what i do wish more is that i had a more of a direction, more of a, uh, this is what I should be spending my time on. Mm. Um, like, so there, there is those dead end roads, right? But I only go down those roads because I don't know where the real road is. If, if I was mm. able to see where the real road is and stay on that real road and keep going forward there, that I feel like I would be just making more progress, right? right? And that's sort of like that the NI and FE. <laughs> so I feel like I'm just like on a track and I feel like right. for whatever reason, God put me on this track and I'm just being pulled along and my emotions are like guiding me there and I have no control over it. It's just whatever track is there. I don't know. It's weird. I'm trying to know. think of what, what, yeah. Gosh, what was I going to say? Um, so, so like it's, it, there, mm -hmm. there is that track. There's no dead ends. There's one path sort of thing. Yeah. 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 And like, so another thing too, um, I have never had the experience of like knowing like in my being that this was the way to go and like then realizing that I was like, wrong um so i feel like this is how like nj's can get kind of arrogant about stuff is like when when an nj is like this is the way um 
that doesn't necessarily mean that we have the authority to talk about like other people's lives or whatever. But whenever I look back on my own life, whenever I have that feeling, like I I've never been disappointed. Oh really? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. And I feel like I can know instantly kind of like with certain people like, Oh, like this person is going to be in my life for a long time. Or like, Oh, this is like this missing piece I was looking for. Like, I feel like I kind of know instantly, like I don't fully know because I haven't experienced it yet, but you You have that inkling. Yeah, Yeah. Like even like when I've, like I've been dating my girlfriend for like two and a half years, but I feel like I knew in a week and so did she. Yeah. And um, I feel like, I don't know, like, and you don't really know because you don't actually know anything about the other person, but like, I f- yeah. yeah, I feel like a lot of people feel that way though. Yeah. About every single relationship they've ever been in. But- yeah every time it's like, no, no, this one's different. This one is more real. Yeah. Yeah. But then I feel like it's like people, when you feel that it's like, that was the, that was right for the time. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. but then even like with two of my best friends, it's like, we became best friends in like a week or something. And I was like, okay, you're now like a character in my life story or something. Like, I don't know. Like, and this is how I like move quickly with friends and like people yeah. is because I feel like I'm on that track and then like I know what I'm looking for and then it's like you see it and it's like okay that's what I was looking for but it seems like for you it's like you are always pushing forward for like new experiences but you don't necessarily know like what track you're on um it feels like so no matter what we're all on on a track we're, there's only one time, one body, one place we can be at mm-hmm. a, at one time, one thing we could do. Like, mm-hmm. so, so I know I'm on a track. Um, I don't know where it will lead, but I, I know it will go good places if I'm pushing it towards, like if I'm making the right choice in the moment, I guess. Hmm. I wonder, so comment below if you're watching, I wonder how NPs feel about being on a track if that feels limiting to them (laughs) right (laughs) yes exactly yeah they would definitely see it different yeah Yeah, I just realized that because when you were like well we're all on a track I'm listening I'm like yeah well duh (laughs) I'm like wondering like what they would think about that but they're on a track too even though they might not want to admit it (laughs) (laughs) yeah the track just kind of goes in a more twisted way (laughs) not in a bad way I don't mean twisted in a negative way but um, yeah, well, that's really interesting. I feel like I learned a lot about ISTPs just from hearing you talk and also the difference between, because uh, I feel like it's almost like you're seeking like this NI understanding, yeah. and, but you don't know how to get there. We're like, I feel like, and even when I was talking earlier about how I know what my ideal life is, like, but I'm not living it yet. Sometimes I'm like, well, why are you not living it yet? And it's an ST problem. I yeah. don't know how to get there. Like, I don't know how to make it real. Yeah, like, I think that goes back to the the happiness thing too. I was thinking about this the whole time um, that like happiness is really just accepting your current situation and accepting mm-hmm. what, what, yeah, what is. Um, and I think that that's a difference a subtle nuance is that um, I'm not chasing happiness because I can find happiness mm, right mm-hmm. now. What's the yeah. point in getting something more? I have what I need. Like I'm alive. That's enough to be happy. Why is that not enough? You know? Yeah. And I think a big thing with that too is at least for me is that I've had to learn to accept myself and love myself because if you don't like love yourself, then you won't be happy because you won't enjoy spending time with the person that you're like destined to spend time with. And it like helps you accept just living. Cause like, I feel like when I was younger, when I didn't love myself as much that the whole idea of like um, having to accept the moment, like was a lot harder because it's, Mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to enjoy doing the dishes. If like, being alone with your own thoughts is like interesting Mm -hmm. and 
I don't know. I don't know if IPs like with the, um, the self function, like FI or TI, if you are more likely to like be entertained by your own thoughts or something, yeah. I feel like that's something that I have not always felt, but I feel like honestly, like through typology and through other outlets, like things for my TI to think about, I'm like enjoying my thoughts more, <laughs> but like, that's not always, that's not always been the case, but I feel yeah. like, yeah. I'm still trying to wrap my head around someone who isn't me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like how, how would you experience TI as an inferior thing as something that's, that's difficult as something that's, that's not, I don't know, not a default way of working. It's just, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess to end this, is there anything that you want to add or explain, I guess, about how it feels to live as a TI dominant person or like whenever you're like trying to envision what it's like to not have that, what is it that you are thinking about? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, I, I think I'm, I, I think I, first of all, this is true of everyone. We're just not, we're not aware of how different we are, how, mm -hmm. how, how people don't see us, how people are, are completely blind to us and the way we work. Mm -hmm. And we just figure that everyone works the same and everyone should be able to see me because they're, they should function the same. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like a huge part of the TI is, is, uh, just the way you would state a conclusion and you would want someone to, to counter it mm. and not get offended by you stating a conclusion or like you would expect people to behave in a certain way and they just don't. And it ends up being confusing and it ends up being um, like a, a, a lifelong challenge to figure out that I think that it's just that FE. It's just mm. like, I think that's the difference I can see because TI has always been, TI will always be, but the FE is something that I can grow in. The FE is something that has changed over time. And so, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely putting in the work there has been very beneficial in terms of not being stuck in my own perspective and um, seeing how I can come off as n not as uh, from the perspective of someone else. Um, like maybe explaining mm. myself better or, or, or not assuming that like people would say something if they, if they, yeah. Do you, I, do you feel like, I, okay. Do you feel like life as a TI Dom is like, uh, lonely in the sense that like, you think that everything you're doing makes perfect sense but then you're bumping up against people that don't know what you're talking about. And you're just like, wait, what's wrong with you? Like, why don't you get it? Or it's like, not that, not in the, like a mean way, but do you oh, yeah. find yourself like confused whenever you bump up against people? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, it, it, and, it, and it still takes like, even after knowing typology, it still takes a second for me to realize, Oh yeah, you're not, you're not doing the TI. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I need to explain the logic to people. I need to show my work sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, is there anything else that you want to add about? Just thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. a great talk as always. Um, yeah. Um, I'll be linking his channel below and, um, hopefully you guys learned some things about ISTPs just from seeing the inside of an I ISTP's brain. So leave any comments if you're confused about, or if you have any questions about ISTPs and maybe we'll answer in the comments, but yeah. Yeah. I'll come hang right. out in the comments every so often to see what people cool. are commenting. So cool. if you, yeah, if you guys want to comment, I'll, I'll answer too. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time and thank you all for watching and yeah, have a good one. All right. Bye.